that victory. Some of our semifinal teams have now been decided. As you heard Riv mention, that win will secure semifinal appearances for both SKT and AHQ. And in order to save TSM from outright elimination at this point, Besiktas needs to win versus EDG or Fnatic. If they go 0-2 though, then TSM is out. So gentlemen, only two spots remaining now in that semifinal or yes, yeah, semifinals. <laughs> They're not looking good for TSM at this point. Not at all. Their play looks horrible. Like just across the board, really bad. The pressure, the lack of pressure is crazy. They're getting outplayed across the map. Solo lane advantages and their pick ban as well coming into this is a little questionable. I don't think we have a replay for this game, but I think we should replay the time where both of you picked TSM. <laughs> <laughs> now I picked the HQ. Yeah. Grum's no. feeling pretty good about that. Is the profit back? <laughs> but, but to Zyrene's pick ban point, uh, Grum's, I know you had said that you felt there was a little ignorance on the side of TSM by leaving that fizz up. Right. Now, Fabiven was outspoken about how good Westor was on Fizz, and we know for a fact that he's really good at this champion. And they come in with the plan, let's go with the blind pick Cho'Gath. But in the bans, they ban a Zed. Cho does very well versus Zed. They've played this matchup versus High in the LCS finals. You, he's a really good Zed. This is a great matchup for Cho. Why not ban the Fizz, who you have no experience against, especially a Fizz to the caliber of Westdoor? It makes no sense to me as to why you would do such a poor draft base, in my opinion, regarding the mid lane matchup. And, I mean, as for the actual jungle matchup, uh, there's a lot to say about that one. Well, Mountain has such good tunnel placement. His early tunnels and his routes around the jungle are crazy because he stays in the enemy jungle for a long time to the point. Uh, I want to I want to go already. to spawn yeah, yeah. on this point because after they made that change, Mountain to jungle, Albus to support, things have really looked good for HQ, and they seem like they're coming into form just now in this tournament. Yeah, they certainly are. Mountain didn't actually look that fantastic in the playoffs. He and West all look like they're a little bit disjointed when they were playing together. At the moment, they look completely on point. So props to Mountain coming through and really stepping up huge. I think out of everyone on the LMS lineup, this is a guy that's really arrived. Talking about people that haven't arrived though, I'm still looking for Santorin to actually appear in one of these games. For the first 10 minutes, the guy just takes walkabouts around the rifts. His jungle pathing is even questionable because he was getting inv uh, invaded on the weak side of his map. If they had been like two seconds later to the red buff even, that wouldn't have turned out correctly. He really is not playing the game smart, and that's what we're used to seeing out of Santorin. I have a theory about this tournament, particularly to the... West, uh, to the Western teams and uh, not just the Western teams, but the Asian ones and the draft. You see SKT, you see EDG, and they're bringing out Kalista as a power pick, right? And you're thinking, okay, these teams are trying to copy that. And one of those that copies it is TSM. They try to, try to bring out the Kalista, but their Kalista is just not at the same level. And then you have AHQ on the other side, who's trying to copy a little bit of what the Korean team is bringing. And instead of Focusing on the Kalista, they're going on the Rex side, which is a much easier to execute champion that they've seen a lot of success. In the LMS, he hasn't played that much Rex side, and they're just bringing it out here. It's like, and it's being really successful. TSM should try to do that. Yeah, Rek'Sai is absolutely crazy right now. We saw them try to play the Rek'Sai early, but also Kalista is a little strange as a first pick because if you leave Urgot up, they counter pick it with an Urgot and then you force it to go middle and then they kind of pigeonhole that. So when they played Kalista, they were like, all right, we're just going to pick Urgot, throw that down bottom into a terrible matchup for Turtle. And then they got Urgot Nautilus bottom lane, which is such an oppressive lane. If you just misposition one time, you pretty much lost that lane. And the other thing that I really want to hit on is the fact that Bjergsen is playing completely fine, honestly, but he's not doing anything for his team. We keep saying that Bjergsen's up by 19 CS. If I pick Ziggs, Cho'Gath, Cho'Gath, I'm going to be up by CS as well. well there's there's no damn play. pressure in his lane. Yeah, he needs like, to play. Nobody is putting pressure on his lane. Like Usually TSM is like, okay, Bjergsen has this little CS advantage, then Santorin comes in, flash body slam, get the mid laners flash. Something along those lines. They haven't done that at all but this you're tournament. not killing a Fizz with a flash body slam. He's I know. just getting away. So uh, Bjergsen really needs to take a playmaking champion into whatever their next matchup is because if he doesn't win the game along with Lost Boy, I honestly don't know who wins it for TSM right now. Yeah, I think at this point, you have to stop and take stock of which players on your team are performing at least to a certain level, which are Bjergsen, Lost Boy, Lost Boy doing as much work as he could yet again, and say, all right, let's start building compositions and strategies around the way that they're playing. Let's put Bjergsen in a position that he can affect the other lanes because right now, they're putting him in a good spot 
position in his in his own lane and saying, all right, somebody needs to come help him out. They need to go, you know, from from the mid lane to the outside lane. And Bjergsen was actually very outspoken on his stream about how well Zed does against Fish, and they took uh, Fizz, and I, he took it off the board. He's actually very outspoken that in the laning phase, particularly, he does a fantastic job. And I know you don't purely pick for the laning phase, but Bjergsen needs to make something happen that isn't a 20 CS differential. Now, a day's rest didn't do anything for the TSM composure, and I'm thinking, okay, you got your two best players right now. Lost Boy and Bjergsen. And funny, they hovered over the Bard. I think Bard would be a great pick for TSM right now, just because, similar to Thresh, he can get a lot of people out of very sticky situations. You got the ultimate, you got the speed up, the CC that makes it very difficult to chase, on top of the magical journey, who we all love to take. Now, I think that they should have actually gone for that pick and try it on the next couple of games. The Thresh just isn't working. You're going to need five Lanterns to save everybody in this game. Well, and Bard's was, entire was... purpose is to make plays around the map, is really to affect all of the lanes, not just one. Yeah, I was expecting a Kennen here. I was expecting a Kennen Callista because this is Lust Boy's fourth game in a row on Thresh, and it hasn't been working out. He's trying to do a lot for his team to make plays, but they're just not coming through. He's trying to get Santorin into his lane. I don't know if they're putting too much pressure on the bottom lane. In fact, they're not putting pressure anywhere. Santorin seems to be just like walking up to try and diffuse pressure to have some presence on the map, but he's not actually having like sticking presence where it's like we're afraid of Santorin in the jungle. It just felt like he was to go to Cloud Templar's old term of a herbivore. Right? He's not a carnivore jungler right now, and that's what's kind of on top in the meta right now. You have to be playing a farm jungler that actually is affecting lanes. All right, well, a really tough loss there for TSM after expecting to turn it around today. But for AHQ, securing their spot into tomorrow is fantastic. Now it's time for us to take a short break, but when we return, China's Edward Gaming will take on international wildcard Besiktas Esports. So don't go anywhere because you'll want to see that in three and a half. If we lose this one, no chance. Make sure we give it our all for this. Yeah. No chance, guys, if we lose this one. Yep. No chance whatsoever. Hashtag the lost chance. A nice ultimate from Santorin gives him some time to think about it, but he still goes down. Dyrus is right in the middle. Everything's used in defense. Steadily's going to fall double kill. Already banned, but can they get any more mountain? He's going to get caught up. It's another beautiful kill, but triple. Flash is on beautiful arcane smash. Oh! to three. This LMS team is showing up for MSI. 